G'day everyone, my name is Hoi and in this video I'll show you how to remove excess shine from your images. I'll be using two portraits which you can download from the link in the description if you want to follow along. But the techniques that I'll be using is also applicable to other images such as landscape. So don't think you're confined to just portraits with this technique. Now before we get started I want to plant this caveat right at the beginning. Now there are plenty of ways to remove excess shine from your images. Some are more manual than others and in my opinion there are no right or wrong. The technique that I'll be showing you works for me and my workflow so simply just have a look see to see if it also works for you and your workflow. To get started I'll be using this image and the first thing that I'll do is create a selective color adjustment layer. So let's go to our adjustment layer icon here, go down to selective color and the first thing that I want to do after creating that is just select the shine areas here. So I'll be using a blend if technique and that's the same technique that I use in my luminosity masking tutorial which I posted recently. So if you're interested in the detail of that just check out the card up top or the link in the description. Let's open our blend if sliders by double clicking on the empty area here, not the word here, but the empty area here, that will bring up our layer style menu. We're going to be working with the blend if sliders here and specifically the underlying layer sliders. But before we do, we need to visualize what these sliders will impact. And the way I'm going to do that is by using the color overlay. So let's click on the word color overlay, not this checkbox here. And that will bring up our options here. And the reason why I said not to check this checkbox here is because if you simply just click on this check mark here, it will apply the existing settings that you have, which may or may not be what you want. So by clicking on the word color overlay, it will provide this menu option here and then you can choose the options that you like. Now I've chosen a blue color here and the reason why I've done that is that I want to pick a color that isn't in my original image to begin with and that's because if I choose a similar color to what the original image already has then when I apply the effect I'm not sure which is the color overlay and which is the color of the original image. So something like blue really stands out against this picture here. But you can use any color that you wish. And obviously if your image has blue in it, then you obviously select a different color. I'm just going to select that again. And you can copy my settings here. My blend mode is normal and my opacity is at 100. Now if you need to change the color, simply click on this palette here and then you can choose whatever color that you want. I'm just going to press OK, go back to my blending options here. And as I mentioned, we're going to use the blend if underlying layer sliders. And that's because the adjustment layer, which is on top, the effect will apply to the underlying layer here. I'm going to move this slider from left to right and what that does if I just move this out of the way is saying that for these tones this black tone here all the way to this uh, gray tone here which at the moment is 124 out of a total luminance range of 255 it's saying that from here to here the pixels from the underlying layer which has these tonal ranges will punch through, we'll see it in our image here. And what's left is this blue area here. So in other words, the blue area is what the adjustment will have an effect on. So I'm just going to finesse that a little bit more. So maybe something like 150 maybe. And you can see that the edge is a little bit too harsh. So I want to feather those edges so it's not as abrupt. We can do that by pressing Option or Alt on our keyboard. And if you press on this tab here, I got ahead of myself there. You can split these sliders to the right or to the left and just monitor your effect here. For those who are a little bit more perceptive, you can see that not only has it applied to the areas that we want, which is great, but it also has applied it to her fingernails. Now the fingernails are not the actual shine, of course, but because the fingernails are white, the blend if 
option has also selected that. For the time being, we won't worry about that. All we're worried about is whether our blue area is selecting the parts of the image that we want. For these areas that we don't want the effect to be had, we can mask that out, which I'll show you later. So something like this looks good to me. And once I'm happy with it, I'm just going to press OK. Now, the blue overlay is only for our benefit. That was just to show where the effect will be applied to. Now that we've got our visualization, I don't need that effect anymore. So I'm just going to turn that off by clicking on that eyeball there. And I'm going to click on the selective color icon. And in our properties panel, you'll see these options here. For your colors, let's select whites because it's the shiny parts of the image that we want to affect. And that is categorized as white. I'm going to go from bottom to up while I'm adjusting it. So starting off with the absolute option selected and the difference between the absolute and relative, here's a 30 second explanation. So absolute means that any of these adjustments will have a bigger effect compared to relative. And that's because, for example, if a pixel on her lips is say 50% magenta, and then I increase that magenta slider to 10%, then that same pixel that was 50% magenta will now become 60% magenta. 50% plus the 10% that I've increased it by here. Now, if I press relative, what that does is that it's relative to the amount that's already there. So using our 50% magenta pixel on her lips as an example again, the relative option will say, okay, you want to add 10% to a pixel that's already 50%. So 10% of 50% is 5%. So the 50% will now become 55%. And that will result in a softer or a less harsh effect compared to absolute. For this purposes, I'm going to just click on absolute. I'm just going to reset this magenta. Now I can manually slide it back to zero or quicker way is by double clicking on it and that will reset it back to zero. I'm going to click and drag this black slider to the right while I'm looking at this picture. Now, I don't want to go all the way to the right because you literally see the blacks coming out from the image, which is what we don't want. But what I tend to do is exaggerate it. And then from that exaggerated point, just dial it back to the point that looks okay. Now that I'm okay with it, let's go to the yellow slider. And again, I'm just gonna exaggerate the effect so I can see it and then just dial it back down to a point where I think is natural. So I'm just looking at somewhere on her cheeks here and that looks okay to me. Now, the beauty of this technique is that these are sliders. You can always adjust it. If the yellows are too harsh, just dial it back a little bit more. So let's do the same thing for magenta, I'm just going to exaggerate it and then dial it back down to something like this. For this cyan, I'm wanting some red and the opposite of cyan is red. So I'm just going to dial it back this way to the left instead of back to the right. So let's dial it back here. So it's something like this. And that looks good. Now, I should have mentioned the opposite of these colors here. So it's not intuitive by using the selective color adjustment layer. So I'm just going to select my color balance adjustment layer here. And here is more intuitive. So the opposite of cyan is red. The opposite of magenta is green. The opposite of yellow is blue. So if you need those kind of colors on your selective color adjustment layer, but you don't see it here, try to move it back to the other side and then you'll get your color. So magenta, the opposite of magenta is green. So if I want green for whatever reason, I can go the opposite way. So I'm just going to undo that by pressing command or control Z. So let's delete this color balance layer here. For some reason that hasn't deleted, I'm just gonna press delete on my keyboard and that will get rid of it. So this is before this selective color and this is after, before, after. Now, as I mentioned, if you look very carefully here, 
it has also impacted the white fingernails. So just have a look at it again. So any of her fingernails, so before, which is a bit brighter, and then after. I don't necessarily want to remove the whiteness from her fingernails, so I'm going to mask that out. Just make sure that your selective color mask is selected. Press B on the keyboard, and then make sure that black is your foreground color. If it isn't, you can press D to reset it to default colors, and then you can press X on your keyboard to switch it around, or you can press this toggle switch here. Now, I'm just gonna reduce the size of my paintbrush, which is the left bracket key, and then make sure that my flow and opacity is all the way up to 100, and then just paint that out. And this is before, and this is after. Now, if you don't like the amount of shine that is left, you can always play around with this. And the reason why I like this approach compared to other approaches, for example, there are other tutorials which show painting the shine away, is because that these sliders are very adjustable. You can adjust it however you like. Now, again, I'm not saying one technique is better than the other. My philosophy with Photoshop is that it's good to know all the techniques and then use the one that is suitable for you and your workflow. Now, another advantage of this technique is that if I didn't need to mask the fingernails out, I could use the same settings on whatever image that I want because the selection, the blend if selection, is simply instructions to say, you know, apply the shine or the effect to these areas here. Another beauty of this technique is that it also works on skin that are darker than this model here. So I've got this image of another model which has a darkened complexion and I just want to show you the same technique. Now it's not going to be exactly the same techniques which is why I'm showing you how to do it with a different image. The first step, if you remember, is using a adjustment layer, the selective color adjustment layer Let's double click on the empty area to bring up our layer style menu. Remember, we needed to see where the blend if will affect. And we do that by clicking on the color overlay here. And it's using our existing settings, which was blue, which is fine for me because in this image, there is not a lot of blue. There's actually no blue that I can see anyway. I'm sure there is blue in the image. So let's click on that again. Let's go back up to our blending options here. And then let's use our underlying sliders again. So move it left to right. And I'm just going to adjust it something like this. Now, I don't want harsh edges here. So I'm just going to split it. Press Option or Alt to split that tab. And then just feather that out. The obvious thing that I'm not addressing at the moment is that, yes, it is selecting the shiny bits on her face, but it's also selecting the white-ish background here. Now, I've deliberately chosen this image because of this, because I don't want you to think that, you know, my technique is just click a few sliders and that's it. That won't be real life examples. Once I'm happy with the selection on her face and on her body, I'm going to deal with the background a little bit later. So for the time being, let's press OK and let's deal with the background now. So I'm just going to mask that out. So click on the selective color mask and instead of using the brush, I'm going to invoke my lasso tool. I can press L on the keyboard or I can press this icon here. And what I'm going to do is just to outline or go over the areas that I want to keep. Now I'm going over very quickly, but in your real life example, just zoom in and just make a accurate selection. Now this is one selection and the selection here, I also need to add to it. So to add to your existing selection, let's press shift on the keyboard. Your cursor will change into this plus icon here. And then let's just mask that out or let's select that actually. Now also, if you've made a mistake and selected more than you should have, you can press Option or Alt on your keyboard. Your cursor will change into this minus sign here and then you can just do the same thing. So let's say I didn't want this selected. I can press Option or Alt on my keyboard and that will just remove it. 
Now with these two sections selected, what I actually wanted to have selected is actually the inverse, this blue bits in the background here. So I can select the inverse by pressing Command or Control Shift I. So everything else is selected except this bit here and this bit. So just again, make sure that your mask is selected and then make sure black is selected as your foreground color. Then press Option or Alt and Delete. And that will mask out everything but these areas here. Now I don't need these selection again, so I can press Command or Control D to deselect that. Now my selection isn't perfect here. I'm going really quickly for the purpose of this tutorial, but let me just fix that. So with my mask selected and my lasso tool selected, I'm just going to select that bit again. And this time I'm going to paint white on top of this. So white is my background color. So I can press Command or Control Delete to fill it with white and that will bring back that effect. So let's deselect that by pressing Command or Control D. I'm going to zoom out a bit by pressing Command or Control Zero. Now you can obviously fix your mask however you like, but this is good enough for this tutorial. I'm going to apply the selective color adjustment again. But before I do that, let's turn off the color overlay effect so we can see what we're doing and then press on this icon here to bring out our options here. Remember, let's select our absolute value here and let's start playing around with the black slider here. I can exaggerate it and then bring it back to a point where I don't see the black areas. No matter what the ethnicity or complexion of the skin is, it will always have a bit of yellow and a bit of red and a bit of magenta. So that's why we're playing around with all these sliders here. So let's exaggerate the yellow. Something like this looks good. And the magenta. Just dial down the yellow a bit. And then remember, we want a little bit of red. So the opposite of cyan is red, so I'm moving it to the left instead of the right. This looks okay, but as you can see, it's still a little bit shiny. So on this complexion, what we need to do is also adjust the midtones, not just the whites. So let's click on colors and click on neutrals. This will select your midtones. So let's do the same thing on your blacks. Let's exaggerate a bit and then dial it back to a point. So something like this. And then you can adjust your yellows, magentas, and maybe your reds. And this is the before, after, before, after. So if you can see the eyes, if I zoom in a bit, it has also impacted the eyes here. So again, that's not a problem. We can click on the mask and then mask that out. So make sure that the mask is selected. Press B on the keyboard. Let's just make sure that the visibility of this layer is turned on. And then with black as our foreground color, I'm just going to make my paintbrush a little bit smaller so we don't over paint on it. And then I'm just going to paint this area out. And you can do it with any other section that you like. And I'm just going to zoom out. And this is again before, after. Now the final thing is that if you like this effect, but say you wanted to keep the shine on the lips, again, you can do it by masking. So I'm just going to turn on this effect again and make sure that my mask is selected on my keyboard to bring out the brush tool. And then with black as my foreground color, I'm just going to paint that back in. So I can zoom in a little bit more. So the effect, the full effect, you can see it from here. If you don't want that intense of an effect, you can just reduce your flow and that will bring it back slowly, not as harsh. And that's how you can remove excess shine from your images, whether it's portraits or landscapes or anything in between. And if you like this tutorial, make sure that you like, comment, subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can get notified for when the next video is out.